Welcome, my buddy. This is the Rotary E-Club of Silicon Valley, and every week we bring you the stories of people who are making their communities locally, globally, and digitally all the better. And as a part of Rotary International, 1.4 million Rotarians and Rotaractors and 36,000 plus clubs around the world, we just love doing that. So our particular club, the Rotary E-Club of Silicon Valley, is not only online E-Club, but it is asynchronous because there are lots of people out there who have a heart for service to others, but making a weekly meeting at a particular time is kind of a non-starter. So we figure it's a good way to, to put a few more chairs at the table of Rotary. We are happy to have with us today a member of the Silicon Valley community. Uh, and this is this is somebody I met at a at a San Jose event. Um, uh, actually, more to the point, I met one of her colleagues at a San Jose event. Uh, called Viva Calle, uh, and where everybody gets out and, and, and walks around in the street and shares ideas and sees cool things and, and learns good stuff. And uh, and Carmen, the good soul uh, that I met, introduced me to Aaron, our speaker. And Aaron is the founder of Local Color here in San Jose. Now, this is this is a really, really cool uh, artist organization that uh, that she will describe. And I know that those of you watching in communities in other parts of the world will probably stop and say, how do we make that happen in our community? And, and the answer is to get in touch with these good folks at Local Color, localcolorsj.org. Aaron, it is such a pleasure to have you. Those of, those of you who are watching this, if you haven't already read her bio and you're on our YouTube page, pause, scroll down a little, you'll see the bio there. Or if you are on our meeting page at siliconvalleyrotary.com, then pause, go back up to where the bio is that you might have missed accidentally on the way down and give that a read. And with that, Erin, the floor is yours. Please tell us more about Local Color. Thank you. It's my favorite thing to do. And it's Friday, which is my favorite day. So I'm stoked to be here. It's also going to be a three-day weekend for many of us, I hope. Um, I'm really excited to be here to present to the uh, E-Club, the E-Rotary Club. Um, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about Local Color, about how just to set the table a little bit about how we got to where we got where we are now and uh, a little bit of our history and where we're going so a little past present and future for you so i'm going to share a screen efficiently because i've been doing this for three years now right uh, let's see can you see what i see yes okay i got a thumbs up and that's good enough for me. Okay, so um, I'm Erin Salazar. I'm the founder and executive director of an artist's organization based in San Jose called Local Color. And our mission is to build equitable pathways for artists to thrive. So jumping ahead, I gotta jump back a little bit. Um, I'm an artist, I'm a community organizer, and I'm a, I'm a wildly ambitious dreamer based here in, in downtown San Jose where I've been for the last uh, 17 years. Um, I am a Spartan, I'm a proud Spartan, graduated class of 2011 with a BFA in studio practice, I'm a painter, um, and uh, graduated most recently from UPenn uh, as a bartender and an artist. I didn't have a lot of that backbone of um, nonprofit management, I had just had a lot of experience. So I graduated last year from the uh, University of Pennsylvania's School of Social Policy and Practice with a Master of Science in Nonprofit Leadership. It's kind of like an MBA with uh, social focus. It's re really fun. Um, here is a low res picture of a Joshua tree. Um, I am originally from the Mojave Desert of Southern California. And as I had mentioned, I moved, it, I moved here to San Jose when I was 17, um, 17 years ago. So I've now been in San Jose for as long as I have not. Um, uh, it's a desolate, dry, and barren as it appears here. It is cultureless, and I could not wait to get out. So uh, I, well, I came here, I went to college, and I had a really, really, really idyllic college experience here. This is our graduating photos uh, where we had a paint fight um, in, the, in the art department at San Jose State with nobody's permission and only got in a little bit of trouble. So uh, these are the girls, these were the, all the gals that graduated with me, and we had. Um, a heck of a lot of fun that day. Um, so then I, here we are, fast forward to about eight, eight years ago, I started seeing like similarities in where I was from versus where I, where I was, this picture was taken eight years ago. Um, and I was seeing a lot of brown and a lot of beige and a lot of 
khaki color and I was just so sick of it because me and all my friends were artists we don't have anything else to do except for bartend and paint stuff and so I started we started thinking all these names for San Jose we were like it's Tan Jose or it's Vanilla Con Valley or it's 50 Shades of Beige and we just went down the list like just just being so brutal and ruthless to the city. Um, but you know, what I've learned is that if you have enough energy to be upset about something, you have enough energy to change it. So um, I myself am an artist. I've been painting in bars and restaurants for the last uh, 17 years here. Um, and so I just have always been a painter, always been a creator. And then I share this picture because this was taken in, um, in my art studio after college. Uh, after college, um, my little sister got in a little bit of trouble and I went down to the Mojave Desert to get her. And she lives up here now with us and she's doing a great job. And right when she moved here, we became unhoused and we had no place to live. And so because we were struggling financially, um, we moved into my art studio. And so her and I shared an 800 square foot room with a sink. And so we had a lot of creativity and a lot of I think it's fun. She says I, I uh, romanticize it. I thought it was a lot of fun. Um, but there we were. We were uh, had no place to live, squatting in this art warehouse. And I started to learn a lot about the street art and street art culture. So I had the academic background from going to state. And then I was like having this very, very real experience living in this warehouse. Um, man, uh, so then this was about 20 uh, 2010, 20, 2011 ish. Uh, these, these two gorgeous people here are my folks. Um, in 2011, uh, right after I graduated college, my dad passed away. And then right after that, my mom passed away. So in one year we lost our house, uh, living in a warehouse, both my parents had died. I was the oldest person in my family and I really needed something to do and somewhere to put all of that energy because I had so much built up and I needed to do something positive. My parents were 55 years old when they passed away. And I thought at the time that that's how old I was going to be when I pass away. I don't think that anymore. Um, I make healthier decisions with my life. And um, I just thought I could be more impactful working for other people than I could be just working for myself. So. Um, I started a nonprofit and I just put all of those feelings into helping other people. I thought I could be more impactful in that way. So Local Color uh, became a 501c3 in 2015. Um, what is Local Color? It has two meanings, which are uh, both, I love both. Um, the one that I knew it as first was in art. It's the natural color of a thing in ordinary daylight, uninfluenced by the proximity of other colors. And so that's the term that I originally knew. And the second, well, the first definition listed here is that it's the customs, the manner of speech, the dress or typical typical features. So it's those little idiosyncrasies that make a, spa uh, a place special. Um, and so to me, it's like the, the big and the small, it's the maximum and it's the minimum. And I just, I really like that it comes in extremes. And so that's local color. Um, I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about our programs and what we do. So. We just went through a strategic planning process and through that strategic planning process, our consultant talked with a lot of our um, stakeholders and they said um, a lot of interviews and things like that. And he said, uh, I hate to tell you this, Aaron, but you're not an arts nonprofit. And I said, oh no, we hired the wrong consultant. He doesn't think we're an arts nonprofit. And then he followed it up with just enough time with bated breath. And he said, you're an artist's nonprofit. And so when I think about that small difference between focusing on the art or focusing on the artists, it is just so aligned with how we think and that we believe that if an artist, if an artist is well taken care of, then we start to see the, the fruits of a, of a healthy relationship with those people. So we've been working on our mission, vision, values, and um, we believe that San Jose, um, specifically communities and artists of color should see themselves, hear themselves and feel their cultural identities as integral parts of um, the city's artistic and cultural landscape. And so with that, we have a brand new mission statement uh, was just approved by the board four days ago. And I feel really excited about that. We, we have a couple of core values that really guide our work. Uh, we believe in the equitable redistribution of resources. We believe that art is for all, that art in public spaces is for you, it's for me, it's for 
people who are rich, poor, housed, unhoused. It's, there's no gallery to walk through. The world is your gallery. Um, and we believe it creates a, a special bond between people and place. Um, and we also value experimentation. We let ourselves do a lot of kind of crazy psychedelic stuff that we wouldn't normally do because we believe in the power of experimentation and innovation. And in the spirit of Silicon Valley, that means something here. So um, we meet our mission through these strategies. We develop and facilitate creative projects that build economic opportunities for local creatives. Uh, we acquire and develop affordable workspaces for local artists. Um, we build support, uh, the capacity of local artists to launch, maintain, and grow their practice. And we celebrate, we do a lot of celebrating, um, educating and advocating for the path of the artist. Since 2015, our programs have centered artists who are living and working in San Jose. 80% of the artists we work with identify, self-identify as BIPOC, 68% are um, female or non-binary. We have secured um, over $960,000 in support of local artists and their visions. We've produced 214 murals and we've served about 230 studio artists. So we say our work is of, by, and for the city of San Jose. Uh, but that's even kind of a lie because we're growing to the whole county. Um, a little brief timeline, I won't go over everything here. And if you're watching, you could just pause it and then just check it out if you feel like it. So, so we started in 2015, we painted our first mural through our first fundraiser, raised our first $15,000, which was awesome. Um, throughout the pandemic, we retained 85% of, uh, of our studio members by providing $100,000 in discounts. Um, we feel like we're built, we're built to hold that. Um, and then I, now this year we are, the staff is growing. It's crazy that we are now a, a woman powered team of five that's about to be six and it feels like almost soon seven. So we're expanding to new programs, new markets and we're looking for anchor space. So I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, here are some more about our programs. We fund public art. So we believe that art connects people to place. And in the height of the pandemic, we paid out $252,000 in artist wages alone. Um, but we're not just working with the cream of the crop artists. We're also building platforms that build up emerging artists. So we run a program called Hella Gardens that leverages some of the vacant spaces or the in-between spaces to um, for public art opportunities for them to get their first, uh, first opportunity. We run an artist in residence program, which means that we work with developers to reactivate spaces that are slated for demolition. Um, to date, we have opened and closed 69,000 square feet of affordable studio spaces. Um, uh, we run a program called the Local Commons, and the Local Commons is our fiscal sponsorship program, which is a fancy way to say that we leverage our nonprofit status to help artists win grants, um, write grants, and uh, kind of everything in between. So we ask that we act as that fiscal agent that helps artists through the journey um, and the scaries of grant writing. Um, we hold an annual fundraiser, which is one of my favorite things in the whole world. It's called 31 Skulls. It's around Halloween and it's a goth formal event. So whatever that means to you, if you're uh, uh, tech goth or um, Victorian goth or uh, uh, metal goth, we, we, we're open to goths of all sizes and shapes. So save the date, October 30, nope, that's wrong. October 27th this year is our uh, 31 Skulls. Um, so what does the future hold for local color? It feels like we've already done so much and we still have a little bit more to do. So uh, we are launching our creative experiences program and that is a, an opportunity for us to engage with people who wouldn't normally identify as artists. So this can be uh, groups of youth, this can be um, groups of uh, teams in tech or teams in corporations, um, and also just putting together experiences for our community. So we, this is a volunteer opportunity that we put together with a local um, design agency where they got to kind of work next to an artist to paint this cool mural. We do art tours of our murals. Um, it's art, it's actually art and studio tours. So it's, a, it's not just your average uh, mural tour and we call that an art hop. And we do collabs and, a, and an artist collab means that we are, um, connecting artists with teams of teams or groups of people to uh, learn a new skill, have a little bit of fun, do a little do a little creativity. Um, what's next? Oh, what's next down the line? Oh, this one's really exciting. It's one of my favorite things that I'm working on right now and it's a mural museum. 
this doesn't really like have a space or anything yet. And I'm putting it out into the universe because I want the good vibes to come back. And when I put it out into the universe, that means I'm also committed to it. So I am publicly announcing that we are pursuing a mural museum. And the concept of this indoor mural park originated at our very first space at 27 South First Street, where we reactivated an old Ross dress for less. And so we had 24,000 square feet where we uh, closed out that project. We had a bunch of artists paint the whole space and it was so rad that I couldn't believe that we thought of that right when we were closing the space instead of right when we were opening the space. So now I wanna do it again with the, uh, the intent behind it. Um, I have this awesome other crazy idea that I've been working on that's called Portals. And Portals is a project that um, uses rear loaded projection, uh, rear, rear projection essentially, um, to leverage some of the vacant storefronts. We have so, so many, 73 in downtown alone, um, to transform these spaces into technology-based public art installations that serve as gateways or bridges between communities. So for us, that means, um, what does that look like nationally? If we are swapping artists or swapping photographers or digital artists with like Macon, Georgia or Akron, Ohio or Charlotte, North Carolina, what does that look like? And then I kept thinking about it and I was like, what other relationships do we have? Well, San Jose has its sister cities program. So last, uh, earlier this week, we had a conversation with the city of San Jose to see if they had any interest in supporting our small organization's efforts to, ooh, to do global exchanges with other sister cities, like maybe Dublin, Ireland. It's kind of our first one we're going for. So uh, fingers crossed that this project gets off the ground. I feel really good about it. Um, another big priority for us is finding a forever home. Um, as I had mentioned, we've opened and closed, uh, well, we've opened 69,000 square feet of affordable studio space. 23,000 is still active. Um, we've secured these spaces as an in-kind donation, but we are looking to no longer move from space to space every couple of years. So we're searching, searching for our forever home. Um, and you can help us get there and make all these goals and support all these amazing projects. And so we just won a big grant from the Adobe, uh, the Adobe Foundation, their hometown grant, which was awesome. We've been knocking on their door for a while and they finally opened it to us. Uh, we won a big grant from Valley Medical recently, which we feel really enthusiastic about. We have new studio opportunities coming down the line. Um, please consider this a formal invitation to 31 Skulls, the goth formal event to die for. Um, join our fabulous donor base, um, host a workshop with local color or connect me to your corporate social responsibility. Um, I like to sort of end with this wonderful picture, which is of a, pro a project that we ran in 2019 called 100 Block. And instead of hiring one artist to do one mural, we hired a hundred artists to do a hundred murals. And so this is a way that we were showcasing San Jose's artistic and creative diversity um, by hiring 100 artists. So we made this really wild project come to life back in 2019. And it, and it showed us that when we work with 100 artists, they bring 100 moms to the, the opening and they bring 100 girlfriends and 100 boyfriends and 100 partners. And it became one of the biggest events we ever threw. So that was the power of being a multiplier and local color is a multiplier. So a couple more slides here for you. I know what you're thinking, Aaron, do you have any time to do any art of your own? And you will be gleefully surprised to, uh, to know that I do, I do. I still maintain a regular practice. Um, I just finished a design for the San Jose Sharks for their Women in Teal night. And I did this really cool design that is called um, not fragile like a flower, fragile like a bomb based on the Frida Kahlo quote. And so I have this cool shark bomb that has the bandana in the background, which represents uh, rebellion and women entering the workforce. Um, of course, the moon, which guides our, uh, our femininity and our womanhood. And I can't let anything go past my desk without doing a, a rose on it. So here's some artworks I've created in the last couple of years. Um, and that's it. That's the actual end of my presentation. So I think I went a teensy bit over, but I think it's okay. Indy, absolutely. And and love the visuals that that you're sharing with, uh, with this presentation. Thank you so much, Erin. Uh, you're welcome. If you want to go ahead and stop sharing, I'll introduce the group that we've got. So uh, joining us from Local Color is Carmen Gaines. Carmen, thank you very much for being part of this today.
And from our club, Sandy Stabile. Sandy, good to see you. My name is Rushton Hurley. I am the uh, programs chair for the Rotary Eco of the Silicon Valley. And let's get some questions going with this. So uh, in thinking about the, the different ways of connecting, I, I think it's especially exciting that, that you look at uh, at international possibilities through something like Sister Cities. I, I know that uh, a lot of people who are in uh, uh, are in Rotary are people who like to see you know ha things happen between communities around the world. Uh, so so in addition to those, uh, are you thinking in terms of some some collaborations that are are lar largely digital? I mean, you know, I'm thinking about the space that you showed in that one slide using the the projection from the back, but uh, is, is there kind of a getting things started in terms of collaboration that happens through some simple digital medium before you do something a little bit more, uh, you know, more large scale, I guess? Yeah, I think um, the easiest thing for us to do, we're, we're big prototypers. So even with the studios program, we are starting by these like smaller act smaller term leases kind of activations and then we're hoping to build to something larger so with the idea of incorporating technology and the ambition of going so big like international right away it, it is a little bit scary but we have communities right here in our hometown that we can begin with and a lot of that looks like even bridging the gap between public mural art um like painting that you actually do with your with your two hands um, and bridging even the digital divide. So we work with a lot of artists who, to do digital stuff that um, now can have like a, it can also be public art. And so that's one of the things that I think is so interesting about it is that we can uh, expand what it means to be like a mural. You know, a mural can also be now digital too, if we create a platform for digital artists to do that. So I like the idea of building in participation with uh, connecting communities. We we went through a list of them and we were like, well, we could do like incarcerated youth, giving them voices, uh, bringing visibility to uh, marginalized communities, uh, fostering new relationships with San Jose State University and their um, incredible uh, animation and illustration programs. There's just, it does, and then it doesn't stop. I'm like, well, well then we can work with history, history San Jose to, to show um, you know, some of the historical photographs or tell the historical stories. We can work with videographers, we can work with photographers. It just, it's, it's limit, it feels limitless. Yeah. Well, it sounds like a lot of what you end up doing is, is the kind of thing that allows one of your artists, not merely to have the chance to do some work, but to build a certain kind of confidence that they can do something within the community. Is that, is that accurate? Yeah. Creative confidence is really big for us. I feel like we celebrate our tech um, our tech and our innovation and everything that that is. And I, I think that our, our artists are also worthy of that kind of celebration and confidence. It just, it takes, takes a couple murals. It takes a little sea legs and it takes like uh, the opportunity to experiment and the being willing to take the risks that something might not work or might fall flat or might fail. So we, we try to fail fast. Sandy asked a good question in the chat uh, along the lines of, of what kind of folks you work with. What, what's the age range of artists that have worked on your murals? Oh, wow. Great question. So um, 100 Block, that, that big project with 100 artists had definitely the widest range of ages working on that mural. So we had people who were, uh, we had a mother-daughter um, combo there uh, working kind of side by side on one piece, which was really awesome. But generally our our artists for the murals, let's see, we, we've done youth murals that are very, you know, where we have uh, middle schoolers uh, being wild <laughs> on the murals, which is pretty fun, but we've gone all the way up to, I think some of the uh, other side of the age ranges have been in the 50s or 60s, but we have tons of ambition to bring this kind of work to our senior communities to be able to put some spray paint in their hands and uh, get them outside shaking cans and making stencils and stuff like that. Nice. Now, when we think about this kind of, oh, I'm sorry, Sandy, if you got a follow up on that, feel free. And unmute. Um, it, I was just thinking it would be so interesting to like have a group of 10 year olds, a group of 20 year olds, a group of 30 year olds. And, you know, it's like, you know, what is your favorite things or, you know, just pick a topic and then see how different it would be or, you know, just something through time, you know. That is so interesting. That would be such a cool project is to do like an intergenerational, yeah. um, like hot, like, yeah, I love that. That's a really good idea. 
I guess on the younger range, if you go to the Palo Alto Art Center, um, we got to work with Corey Pang and they worked with a group of students um, at the center to create a permanent mural. So I believe that's still up um, on their parking lot. And it's really interesting, just like the name local color, they're very inspired by what was around them. So you see this like bridge of nature that Palo Alto has, but then also um, how close they are to the city. So there's a lot of blend of that imagination, rainbows, colors. So that would be really fun to see um, along all the, the age ranges. Absolutely. Now, thinking about like these different perspectives about uh, that you get from different age ranges, uh, from different kinds of artists, from different groups that you work with. Aaron, one of the things that that I thought was so interesting about your story as, as I encountered it is that you're essentially a, an, an artist who discovered a certain kind of creativity and entrepreneurship, if, if I can put it that way. Can, can you talk a little bit about that piece of your experience, what it means to think in terms of starting an organization and, and building a business that, that is making a difference in the community in ways that are consistent with your artistic beliefs? That's a, that's a big one. Yeah. I think that there are kind of a lot of things that, that the stars just started aligning. I've always been like, um, uh, bossy you know I guess even when I was when I was a little girl and they would be like Aaron's so bossy man she's always telling everybody what to do uh, I just kind of had to harness that energy from being like younger and then and kind of change the way that I am I I'm I'm not as bossy anymore I think I think Carmen maybe I hope agrees agrees with that I'm not so bossy generally these days but I try to refocus that energy into something different and when I was starting the organization um as an artist, I just wanted to make like kind of like an art project of my life. You know, I never really wanted to like join like a real workforce because I was just like so punk rock that I I I didn't even know where to start. And I had this art degree, I had tattoos, and I was like, I don't know what I want to be when I grow up. So I'll just bartend forever, I guess. And so after I lost my parents, I just became so fearless. I was like, what? what's what's worse you know am I going to lose my parents in my 20s again like no I'm not I was just unafraid to do something that was so weird and wild um and and didn't have like much of a precedent in San Jose so I think just having the desire to want to put that energy somewhere being fearless that I would not disappoint anybody I didn't feel like I had anybody left to disappoint so I just took a kind of gamble on doing something. I didn't know how to use spreadsheets. I didn't know how to use any of this tools. I barely like checked my email that I had left over from San Jose State. And I just started getting organized because I was like, if I could do this, like if I can do, if I could do this, uh, you know, having having planned funerals, having adopted my sister up here, having lived in a warehouse, I was like, nothing else is more scary. Like I could jump out of an airplane. Maybe that would be scary. I could uh, swim with sharks. You know, like maybe that would be scary, I guess. But I I think that there's just a component that I really wanted to do something that was where I was my own boss and I could do something that was like imaginative and innovative and um, nobody was going to really tell me no for the most part. And uh, it, it feels like it's all an art project to me. And I just get to keep inventing these programs and then try to figure out the puzzle of how do I raise money for this? Do I raise money and then start the program? Do I start the program and raise the money? And it's kind of like this like weird balancing act. But we have the most beautiful spreadsheets now. They're all color coded. All of our files are nice. We get to work in like studios with artists. So it feels like an art project that is like a, a, a social art project. It feels It feels that way very much to me. Wow. Well, inspiring. Well, what I'd, what I'd like to do is wind down the recording part of our program. Uh, for those of you watching, thank you so very much uh, for, for doing so. We'll hand it back to Aaron here in just a moment to give a final word. But you who are watching, please let us know you were here. Uh, a little bit farther down the page on the SiliconValleyRotary.com site, you'll find a place where you can uh, just register your attendance. Let us know you're here. We'd like to understand that reach that we have. And then also uh, leave some thoughts. What kind of things did you learn from the program? Uh, what kinds of uh, what kinds of things did did this story inspire in you? And are there other elements of our meeting that may have done the same? If so, 
let us know, respond to the other people that are there. In an online and asynchronous club, that's one of the ways that we share ideas. As we always like to do, we hand it back to our speaker for the final word. So Aaron, what would you like people to have in mind as the video finishes? Uh, I would just like to share tremendous gratitude for this city and for the people, uh, my team, my board, um, my, my, my sister, my family, kind of everybody. I just have tremendous gratitude towards the city that has kind of adopted me and let me, has allowed me to give so much back to a city that has given me so much. So I just wanna share tremendous gratitude for you all for being here, listening to this story and um, supporting public art. Fantastic. Tan Jose no more, right? Tan Jose no more. Tan Jose no more. Thank <laughs> you so much, everyone. We will see you next week. Thank you.